Hello, and welcome to the Insurance Survivors Podcast. In this podcast, my goal is to give you tips on how to outwit, outlast, and outplay the insurance companies, just like that show that I used to love and still do by the name of Survivor. Today's topic is a emotional one. It's one that's very close to me. It's about the largest threat to your assets. What do I mean by assets? Everything that you've worked up until this point to own in your life. The biggest threat in that is something were to happen to you where you would need long-term care. So the first thing that I want to illustrate is that long-term care is becoming more and more prevalent. We are aging as a population and we're living longer. One of the items that is increasing by up to 70% is Alzheimer's and dementia, memory care, is becoming the number one leader in long-term care illnesses that result in a claim. So let's talk about the long-term care policy that you have right now. You say you don't have one, but you do. And that is, is if something were to happen and you were infirmed to the point where you had to go to a nursing home or you had to have in-home health care, your plan says that you would need to spend down your assets until you would qualify for Medicaid. Medicaid says that your spouse can retain one home and a vehicle and a meager income. So that does not sit well with someone that has worked for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years to attain the assets and the comfort level that they live in, knowing that we have to give it all away in order to care for your loved one. Now we'll do that any day and all day because that's what we're here to do is to take care of each other. However, we can make sure that it is so much less painful if we do a little planning. Now long-term care insurance, or at least the face of it, has changed drastically over the years. Traditional long-term care policies are not as popular as they used to be. They have somewhat reverted to life insurance policies with long-term care riders. The issue with both is, is that there is underwriting that has to be passed. And that means there has to be some planning. We have to purchase this young enough so that we'll be able to pass the underwriting. But at the same time, we wanna be able to afford it. So for me, my wife and I purchased our long-term care policies in our early 50s. I want to say when we were 50 years old is when we purchased those. I've purchased Nationwide Care Matters 2 long-term care policies. It's on a life insurance chassis. And what that means is, is that whether I use the long-term care benefit great or not, if the Lord happens to bless me and strike me dead as a doornail and I don't need any long-term care, then my family at a minimum gets a death benefit. That's one of the biggest hangups about long-term care is people say, well, if I take a traditional policy and the Lord does take me home immediately with no issues, then what happens to all the money? Well, it's just gone. There are riders on a traditional long-term care policy called return of premium, which says if that does happen, if you don't need long-term care and you do pass away, then All of the premium that you played in, generally plus some interest, will come back to you, but that's an expensive rider. So being able to afford and pass the underwriting is huge, guys. So if you are currently watching this video and you're in your 60s or 70s, I want you to get on the horn and I want you to call your kid and say, I know you don't have time for this. You're just trying to survive the world, but talk to your insurance agent about long-term care. See if a life insurance policy that you currently have has a long-term care rider on it. If not, I'm happy to talk to those individuals about it. If they don't qualify because they're not able to pass underwriting, there are some additional steps that can be taken. There's such things out there called Medicaid trusts. They're technical and they need an attorney to set up. They have a five-year look back provision. So you really have to understand what you're getting into there. And we can also fund long-term care needs via annuities. There are certain types of annuities out there 
that uh, don't have a ton of underwriting that we have to do in order to get set up. So long-term care in itself can be a scary thought. I personally want care in my home as long as I can get it. I wanna look at my trees, I wanna sip my coffee, I wanna look at my window instead of being in an institution. So with that in mind, we want to put in to the plan home health care where you can stay at home. It's important whether or not you're going to get paid a weekly benefit or a monthly benefit. The devils are in the details, whether it's a reimbursement policy or I have to turn in receipts in order to get reimbursed or whether the contract says if you go on claim, we're going to pay you this monthly amount. If the monthly amount is $2,000 and you only use a thousand of it, you still get to keep the other thousand and put it in your account or your family will use that and stretch that money out as long as they can. So please, please, please do not shy away from the topic of long-term care. It's too important. People come to me in their 60s and even their 70s thinking, you know what, I'd like a little long-term care now because I don't want to hinder my kiddos and it looks like I'm going to need some services coming up. It's too late. It is too late by that time. That's the reason why I am asking for your help to turn on your loved ones to talking to a broker and I'm happy to do that. Talk to a broker about how do they set up long-term care just like I did during my earning years, my particular platform, the premiums are going to turn off at age 65. So I'm gonna pay into this platform, both me and my wife are, for the next 15 years to set us up so that when we do retire, I'm hoping to retire at 65, we'll see if that game plan works or not. But we won't have to continue paying those premiums, but we'll still have the benefit of the plan being there. The plan's on a life insurance chassis, so if something does happen to me and I pass, but I don't go to a facility or I don't need home health care, a death benefit will still be there to help my family figure out what plan B is or pay any emergency room bills. We can use annuities. There's legal options, there's life insurance options, there's traditional long-term care. They're all on the table. I just find that there's too much life happening for people to figure that out by the time they look at their home insurance, car insurance, life insurance, health insurance, disability insurance, whatever word we can put in front of the word insurance, they're just tired. They don't wanna talk about it anymore. And I understand that, but when we look at it in the standpoint of you currently have a plan and that's to qualify for Medicaid, which isn't much of a plan because you spend all of your assets down. Your spouse gets to keep a home and a vehicle and a meager income. Is that really the way you wanna do it? Me personally, I wanna make sure as much of my assets as possible gets passed on to my loved ones, to my kids, to my grandchildren. And we can write a plan to do that memory care is increasing, Alzheimer's is increasing, dementia is increasing. That's what we're seeing as we're living longer. Our longevity is increasing uh, due to lots of reasons in today's world. Um, there's a focus on living longer. There's a focus on eating healthier. Even a lot of the Medicare plans that I sell um, for health insurance are incentivizing people to get out there going to a free gym, giving them free money for over-the-counter benefits so that they make sure that they can get their supplements and their vitamins and their fish oils or just their care. So this is a topic that does not get talked about until it is too late, and that drives me crazy. Right now, my personal story, mom and dad are 84 years old. They live a quarter of a mile away from me. Jacob is 22 years old. Uh, right this second, he's living in my house, but I know that won't always be. I am an example of one of those sandwich kids that are sandwiched between my aging adult parents and my kiddo. And whenever I have the opportunity, um, we will take mom and dad out. We'll go on a field trip or, or something to that effect. And when we come home and Jill and I crash into the couch, we joke and we say, man, we are the best parents to our three kids ever. But uh, it's a blessing that my parents only live a quarter of a mile away from me. It's a blessing that I eat dinner with them 
every single Sunday night, or at least that's the goal. But uh, don't wait until it's too late. When you take a look at your family's assets, which is really your family's legacy, let's figure out how to protect those through life insurance, through long-term care insurance, through riders that can occur. Let's make sure it's set up correctly. Let's make sure that whether it's a weekly payout, a monthly payout, a reimbursement payout, whether we limit the amount of time we pay on it, like I did, where I'm not going to pay any more premiums until age 65. Such an important conversation. Don't be one of the families that are sitting there thinking about it and it's too late. Go ahead, talk to your kiddos about it and uh, let's get this to the forefront of the planning because we will suffer through our earning years in order to live out our golden years as comfortable as possible. That's always the game plan. And with just a little bit of pre-planning, we can help make sure that here, that happens. So once again, I'm Brian Glies with the Scott Insurance Agency. This is your Insurance Survivor Podcast, trying to give you tips and tricks to outwit, outlast, and outplay the insurance game. Hope you guys have a great day. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.